Well, guys, did you miss it? Did you miss good old Rome 2 siege battles? Because that's what we got today. And I hope you got time, because this is going to be a long one. So bring your snacks, get your drinks, sit back, relax, and enjoy the 4v4 Rome 2 siege battle. Uh, so I hope you guys are doing good, doing well. Uh, I know it's been a while since we did uh, Rome 2, so it's good to be back. This is a battle replay sent in by Joe on it, so a big shout out to him. He's got a channel of his own. It's linked down in the video description. Also, Ellington Total War is in this battle, and he's got a channel as well. Again, all the links are down in the video description, so send some love, show some support. Well, if you guys are ready for a barbarian invasion... It, okay, let me let me rephrase that. I just had a total brain fart there. If you guys are ready for a barbarian invasion, you are in the right place. There you go. That's what I was going for. Uh, so we've got pretty much all barbarian factions. We got Getty or Getty, Gete. I, I don't know. I've heard many ways to pronounce. It. I'll, I'll go with Gete. We got Gete, and then right next to him we have the Arverni. So you guys all know the Arverni. They're awesome. Then next we have Boi, Boi, so Boi on the battlefield, and then we have Glacia, which is my favorite, one of my favorite, you know what, they're my favorite barbarian faction, I'm just gonna say it, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna come out and say it, I'm gonna say it. Anyways, they're taking on a much more diverse mix of different factions. We have uh, Carthage, we have Pergamon, uh, Tylus, and then way back here we have the Odrissian Kingdom, which uh, they've got their artillery looking over here. Uh, this is probably the best seat in the house, like, man, where are the enemies? <laughs> I, I hear a battle, I hear an army marching, but I just don't see anyone. I don't know, man, but get ready. Have this, have this bl ballista ready to fire at any moment. Uh, meanwhile, thousands of people are dying over here. Uh, so yeah, uh, real quick before we get started, I just want to say uh, you can support my channel by liking the video, sharing it, and leaving comments and what and, and whatnot. Jeez, I'm having a brain fart all the time. Uh, you could also support it by using my game store, which has 10 of my favorite games on there, and also getting a displate poster, which are really cool metal posters, and they have really cool art, uh, like this one here. Look at that. That's that's a cool one. Uh, so yeah, definitely check it out, and I do appreciate the support. So, let's press play, and let's watch this massive attack here. And these are good players. You can tell just by looking at this setup here. I mean, they're using probably more siege towers than they need. You can never have enough siege towers. It's always good to have more than you need. Uh, so they are all, all four of them, attacking this wall here, which is going to make things... Um, well, it's a good idea because, honestly, if you look around the settlement, eh, there's really nowhere else to attack. You, I guess you could attack a little bit on the flank here, but... You attack here, you're just asking to die. I mean, look at the positioning here of these walls. They're going to get so many archer fire on you. And this is such a tiny look. I don't even think you can bring a siege tower over here. I think you have to use a ram. So there's no point in attacking here. That's a no-go. You could attack back here. But look at this cliff right here. This is kind of blocking a lot of the wall where you can't get siege towers up there. And then, you know, over here there's stones. So, you would think you could just run up this hill and be like, Hey guys, why don't we just jump down? Nope, that's not how Rome 2 works. And then there's cliffs over here. So yeah, this honestly, the only place you can attack, same thing over here, this is just too narrow, is, is over here. It's right here. This is the best location, and that's why all four of the armies are doing so. But Carthage is moving out some noble calf. Now this is ballsy. All right, this is uh, this this is a guts play here, because the noble cav is very expensive, and uh, sallying out sallying out cav can be very rewarding, but there's a lot of risk to it. And if they go out here and don't get anything or run out and die, uh, it's gonna be a big old waste of money. So he's gonna sit here and wait. We've got barbarians holding up here. He's got some mercenary axe warriors. Oh, look at him. He's like, you know what? If you're gonna sit there, I'm gonna run up and try to throw something at you. You're like, ah, no, 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 no. You're not gonna throw anything at my noble calf, you peasants. So, uh, yeah, he's gonna ride away. Um, but back here, Bowie Eye and uh, Glacia are about to uh, meet the walls here. Let me just go ahead and do some fast forwarding here so they can hurry up and get started. I wanna see some slaughter. I didn't come here to watch 
siege towers be slowly pushed up. You know what I mean? So there they go. I guess they're waiting a little bit. Maybe they're they're you know they're trying to use their. Oh wait, these don't have scorpions. That's right, they don't have scorpions. So I don't. I was gonna say maybe they're trying to use the scorpions on top of the siege towers, but it doesn't look like that's happening. But here we go, here we go. Oh, Bowie Eye might be sending up some sword followers here. They're going straight for the artillery, but I'm pretty sure the artillery used up all its ammo. But I'm not 100% sure. So looking at this attack, well, how do you hold it? Well, you send a men up there and, and you try to hold it that way. <laughs> yeah, no, um, this is this looks pretty promising for the defenders. Um, as a defender, you want to keep note of the fallback positions uh, because these are more narrow areas you can hold. Um, I definitely do recommend, like, I like this. This is a good, like, let them take the walls a little bit. That's okay. It's usually how barbarian battles are set up. You know, if this was like a big stone wall, I'd say, hey, go up there and fight. But since this is a barbarian settlement, yeah, just let them take it a little bit. Give them some ground uh, and just use the, the choke points that are all right here like they are all here that you can hold here's one here and that's it three i mean some are fairly big but you got one here here and then here and you're holding against the entire army now there is a little bit of a wall push here but it doesn't even look like a uh, gete is even going for it so they kind of left their siege towers there because they're worried about the carthaginian cav so the presence of this noble noble cav alone is enough to hold back these uh, siege towers so noble cabs they're doing something even even though they're doing nothing at the same time they're doing something so that's good yeah here comes bowie eye they've destroyed the artillery the ballista crew and what are these sword followers okay so pretty decent infantry running up and ready to take on tylus now tylus what's scary about them is the tribal warrior spam uh, these tribal warriors are insanely difficult to deal with Highly armored, very tough, very deadly. So uh, it's going to be tough slicing through these guys. You might want to get some archer support, even though they have a lot of armor. Oh, or maybe artillery support. Hello. Hello. They still, okay. Uh, so three of their ballistas were destroyed from the defending ballista, I assume. But they still have one, and that's all you need. And sure enough, they are going for the tribal warriors. But it's risky play. It's a, ooh. They got a couple there. They got one poor guy. Just like, dang it! And today's my birthday. <laughs> ah, I thought it was gonna be a good day. Uh, I just like how it would be cool if they added like animations of like soldiers trying to pat the fire out or something in the back. You know, trying to help the poor guy out. Uh, but anyways, here comes the charge. This is the first infantry fight here. Sword followers going against the tribal warriors. Again, this is gonna be a very difficult matchup. And then over on the other side, we have another charge of Axe Warriors by Bowie Eye taking on these Tribal Warriors. So I'm actually kind of surprised that Tylus is sending up Tribal Warriors right away to defend this section. Because Tribal Warriors, for me, if I had them, I would save them for late game because they're so good. But hey, you're using them early, that's okay. Uh, hopefully you can do a lot of damage with them. Alright, then Arverni is pushing up some troops as well with the Celtic warriors. Carthage still just chilling over here. What happened over here? <laughs> what was this? What did I miss? Hold on. That might have been artillery? Question mark? I don't know. Possibly. I'm sorry, guys. I don't know why we missed that. Here comes another hit from the artillery of the attackers going after these uh, Celtic slingers. Or Celtic slingers. And look at this fight. The tribal warriors, man. They're going to be putting up a good fight. More and more troops pouring in. But it's like water hishing. Hishing? Hishing? What? What am I even trying to say? It's why it's like water hitting a stone stone wall, I guess. Rock formation. Whoa, we got a little bit of a push out here from the Celtic warriors of Tylus. Going through the gap, making sure to secure the flank of the tribal warriors. Averni's got some nakies over here. 
some nakies coming out to play with their swords and uh, their daggers. <laughs> right, it, uh, yeah, they're sitting in reserve. <laughs> and then Gaty or Ga Ga Gati, Ga Gate, they are pushing up some mercenary axe warriors and they are going to face the Adrissian kingdom with their spears. So the great hold over here. Oh, another area. What the heck? How did I miss this? Yeah, it must have been artillery. And it must have been sneaky because I even missed it. I mean, clearly there wasn't an infantry fight over here. Maybe there was, but I don't know. Lots of death over here. Silent death, I guess. Ooh, Thracian warriors holding a front line. Interesting choice from the uh, Odrissian kingdom. I probably would have had these guys for a flank or any kind of opportunity to charge them in because the Thracians have such good charge bonuses. But they're taking on the Celtic warriors. And over on the other side, back where we're uh, looking over here, the great fight between Tylus and Boei continues. Let's see what's going on with Glacia and Tylus and Pergamon over here, where Glacia is starting to take a bit of a stronghold here, taking getting some ground as they send up the Glacian legionaries. And ooh, they are throwing their javis like it's no other. Like there's no tomorrow. Uh, they do have some siege towers just kind of waiting in reserve. I guess they're trying to break through a flank a little bit first before they're going to commit. But this siege tower is uh, is almost at 100% fire damage. And if that happens, then it's going to uh, slowly burn down. Yeah, there we go. And he's going to have to give up the siege tower. I don't know what he's waiting for. I just get these guys in the fight. I guess, like I said, I guess he just wants more of a presence here on the flank before he commits. The artillery is still opening fire, but it's looking like it's missing a lot of troops. Uh, oh, oh! It's Celtic warriors are starting to break against Bowiei. And Tylus is trying to hold as long as humanly possible. Let's head back over here where, whoa, our Verney. Galatian swords. Wow, we got a lot of civil war action, a lot of units killing each other. Uh, Levy Freeman taking on the Galatian swords. Well, so we have Galatians on both sides, what I was trying to say. So this is actually a pretty good spot to attack on. It doesn't look like the defenders have it that well organized. And look at this Bowie eye has a unit way in the back here who's already fighting the general of Tylus. I think he was tr he was trying to go for the skirmishers, but thankfully Tylus's general was there to protect them. Cool. So, ooh, some breakage going on here from the Odrissian kingdom. Oh man, and there there's a lot of archer fire going around going on around here. And look at this, they're even breaking through. So this has definitely been a very light defense. I mean, what are these, spearmen? Okay, they're axemen, but still, like, come on. Hold your ground. The good news is that over here, they'll have the arrow towers kind of supporting them. Especially against these naked warriors who are very weak to arrow fire. Alright, let's go, let's zoom back out, let's see. Wow, okay, Bowie Eye. Bowie Eye on the verge of breaking Tylus here in their Celtic slash tribal warriors. They break through this. This is going to be a huge, huge opportunity to get very aggressive and try to push through their defenses. And then we got some reinforcements coming over. Look at this Galatian uh, legionaries coming in to help. Now, we got to be honest, even though, even though, uh, Tylus is starting to crumble here to Bowiei, it was not, it was with a cost. I mean, Bowiei lost a lot of troops here, and, uh, they definitely, I mean, the good news is that they took out a lot of tribal warriors for their team. The bad news is that they lost a lot of troops in the process. So, uh, let's see, they're going to regroup probably, yeah, just regroup, push, 
There we go. Look at this fallback. Look at this fallback. And man, I've yet to see a juicy hit from this artillery. It's gotten a couple people here and there. I think this is all from the artillery. But the defenders are going to reform. Look at this. They're falling back. They're probably going to hold right here. They might want to get this unit back as well. Save them from being surrounded. And then Carthage in the Odrissian Kingdom. Wow, lots of death over here. Look at this. Just bodies everywhere. Man, that's crazy. By the way, guys, just a little heads up. The bounce of power is ever so slightly in favor of the defenders. That's not a good sign. Even if the bounce of power was even right now, that's not a good sign. Because, of course, the defenders have the advantage of defense usually they have less money less troops less quality of troops you know that kind of stuff but it's looking like the defenders have the advantage and we're still very early into the siege battle Glacia is finally fully committing. They've got their siege towers all in position as they push. And uh, it makes sense. Bowie is uh, pushing quite ag aggressively. They've decided to hold back their troops because, hey, this is a good opportunity for the artillery to get some work done. Uh, this is a very narrow, dense area, and you're going to very easily get a lot of kills. So they're just sitting back and letting the artillery do the killing. This is perfect. And this is why, guys, oftentimes, ooh, oftentimes you want to save your ammo for artillery. Because sometimes people just use their artillery and tr just they just use all the shots right away. Well, hold on. You might want to wait a little bit. Oh, and it crashed. Ah, oh. why? Why? All right, guys, I think we're back. We're a little bit further past where it crashed, but we're pretty much back where we were uh, where we were before it crashed. Uh, so, yeah, we have Tylus and Pergamon. They have fallen back. They're getting hit hard by artillery as we speak, um, but nothing too crazy, but it is definitely helping out the attackers. This is a smart move by them to just kind of sit back and let the artillery do the work. They have been doing like, oh my god, look at this. Look at the fire, like what is going on? <clears throat> so they have been doing pretty well. Uh, well, how should I put this? It seems like the attack on here is just something to keep them busy. Uh, I, I mean, it just every time they push up, they're pushing up really weak troops. You got chosen swordsmen uh, moving up. Uh, they're pretty good, so maybe now they're trying to truly commit and fight through. I don't know, they've... Just this defense is holding well, is all I'm trying to say. Mercenary hoplites doing everything they can to hold this position. Chosen sword, they're charging it. I mean, look at all the bodies. I don't know. It just seems like they sent in weaker troops to attack this area. And they're just trying to keep this side busy while the main fight, the center fight, keeps pushing. And this is what's left of the outer defense uh, with Pergamon troops. Uh, they are holding the best they can, but they have completely shattered. And then the last one is way over here. You've got some Glacian swords against Glacian swords. My god, they're like, how could you? You betrayed Glacia. I'm just fighting for money. <laughs> I don't know why I gave him that voice. I'm sorry. I'm just fighting for money. Alright, so... <laughs> Uh, this is going to be the end of Pergamon, and um, they are going to most likely be surrounded here. And most of the defenders have decided to fall back. They're just doing a, a complete fallback. Even these archers are getting out of here so they don't get cut off. And it's all going to come down to this narrow pathway. Now, the town center, I believe, is right here. So what makes this really interesting is... The town center is pretty easy to hold. It's got two spots, right? You got two choke points. I've seen this many times on this battlefield, on this this settlement, where the defenders, usually factions with um, with pikemen, will just put one pike here, one pike here, and win, because the the choke points are so narrow that it's hard to get through them. 
But the bad thing about this defensive spot is that it's completely open. It is completely open to archer fire and all kinds of skirmishing. So, if the defenders want to win this, uh, they are going to, tr they need to try to get the defenders to exhaust their skirmishing ammo before they get to that final stand. And here comes the uh, chosen sword band getting surrounded by mercenary uh, Gaelic warriors. And then over on the other side, Bowie I is now pushing and trying to take control of this gate. So they are sending in some sword followers. This is a ripe target for skirmishing, which exactly that's what's happening. These Italian swords might just hold with the help of the arrow towers and the archers, but we'll see. We'll see if Bowie I can break through here. Now we have Levy Freeman just chilling over here. Still have not engaged as a center, but is the artillery still firing? Let's see. It looks like they got a shot here ready to go. Uh, they have 60 kills, which really isn't that many. Uh, maybe they can get a couple more kills, but yeah, 60 kills. I don't know if it was worth it. Bowie I has sent up some uh, Celtic warriors over on this side as well. I don't know what's going on. Like, I think our Verni and the Gete faction, they need to they need to push more troops more consistently. I mean, it seems like every time I look over here, there's just this like random wave of troops, like right here. What is this? What are you gonna get done with this? But well, we do have some noble swords who are looks like they were gonna help Bowie Eye against the Carthaginians. The Italian swordsmen who are still holding their own, which is actually rather quite impressive. So back over here, I think, yeah, I think the Galatians have finally decided to start pushing. They are taking a lot of archer fire though. And Galatia, I mean, they've got a decent force. It seems like they've lost a lot of good men though. Over here, Bowie Eye still going strong, which was really impressive. I mean, Bowie Eye has sliced through Tylus. They've sent over two really good units to help with Carthage. I mean, they've I think they sent over troops over here as well. They've been all over the place, and they still have really solid numbers. I mean, it's not like really great numbers, but considering everything that they've been through, uh, this is all pretty good. And this is this is looks really promising for the attackers. Balance of power is pretty much the same though since we last looked at it. And Bowie Eye is starting to break against the Chad Italian swordsman. And they collect themselves again. They neutralize the gate. We've got a general uh, unit. I think he's waiting to take that gate potentially. I'm not really sure. I'm not sure what happened to the Carthaginian Cav either. They still might be in play. Artillery still set up here. They haven't abandoned the siege machine, so um, maybe they got a couple more shots and then they're gonna run. Cause usually they use the artillery crew as like a meat shield unit or something. Oh yes, noble spearmen coming to help out Bowie Eye against the Carthaginians. Back over here, still nothing yet. Still just kind of waiting. I'm not sure what they're waiting for. I mean, they've got less than 30 minutes now to destroy this defense. And it's gonna take a long time. This is a narrow pathway. And they, I get well, I guess they're gonna try to push them back here. The good thing is that like, if they can break through here, they can move up their archers and put them up on this cliff here and then fire down. So there's a lot of options there. They just have to push through them. I think they're just waiting for this to clear up. I think they want to completely remove the Carthaginians from this area. That way they can focus more men to this position here and not worry about getting attacked from behind. At least that's what it seems like. But this unit of spears is going to hold for a long time. 
least I'm pretty sure they are. Bowie Eye has been completely broken over on this side. Carthage starting to waver now. The Italian swordsmen. They're breaking, but uh, Gete is just like, eh. Okay, we'll go back in, sure. And now they have another unit of Italian swordsmen in the fight. The original unit got 131 kills. That's really good for Italian swordsmen. That's really good. And look at this. Bowie Eye sending in some bowmen. After the Thracian bowmen. We got a bow battle here. Oh, and a charge right in the back of his own units. Not sure what he was trying to accomplish there, but... He's like, I'm coming archers to help. He's like, slow down. Why aren't you slowing down? Slow down. Slow down. <laughs> Slam right in the back of these guys. But it does cause the uh, Celtic Bowman to break. And I'm sure they're holding back pikemen. Yep, sure enough. They've got their pikes sitting back in reserve. I wouldn't be surprised if Carthage has some pikemen back here as well. Oh, here we go. Bowie Eye finally has committed troops to the front line. It's those thorough spears. And then Galatia's, well, well, this was a mistake. What are they doing? They're leaving the flank completely open. Poor Pergamon is like, Pergamon's just like, men. Don't worry about our flank. Our grand allies will defend our flank. Now let's hold and win this battle. Like five minutes later, they look behind. They're like, wait, what? What the hell? What? Oh, no. <laughs> Just surrender. That was pretty. That was a low blow. I guess they're like, you know what? Just we'll just sacrifice him. And then uh, that's all. Look, this is all he needs. A small force here. All he needs to break this unit. I mean, this unit's barely hanging on as is. Oh, boy. Ah, uh, the Javis are a bit overkill. They're already down to 36 men. Watch, as soon as they clash, it's going to start breaking. Ready? And break. Boom. Did I call it or did I call it? We got some archers trying to fire. We got some uh, Cretan archers trying to open fire and weaken this force. Back over this way, we've got a general and some spears holding against the chosen swordsmen who are actually getting a little outflanked here by some Thracian bowmen. Not a big deal. They should handle them pretty quickly. And back here, we've got some noble swords. They're finishing up the Italian swordsmen. Carthage is just throwing his troops into this uh, this unit of noble swords. It seems like they're out of uh, out of troops or something, or they're just like, you know what? Screw it. I don't know. Like, I would take these units and try to fall back. Like, don't just throw them in. But it seems like that's what he's doing. Like, try to recapture this. There you go. Get this firing again. Perfect. Now hold. You'll get so many kills from that. Just that one little move. By reactivating the arrow towers. Got Oath Sworn charging in. Artillery. There's that artillery. It's firing again. I'm not sure what it was going for. But yeah, they're sending up these troops to help out. And look at this. They've crushed Pergamon. And instead of just keep pushing here, they're, I guess they're going to give it up. It seems like they're not going to go down this route. Which I feel like they need to. 
They have to because once you get into this final stand, there's only two choke points. And so you need to use both of them. <laughs> Trying to go through one choke point might be a disaster. Oh, oh my god. Carthage just throwing in his archers. They have no more ammo. It's becoming a mosh pit of death over here at this choke point. The chosen swordsmen are surrounded down to 80 men and dropping. And now breaking because they pushed in way too aggressively. Finally, reinforcements are showing up. go they're gonna reform reorganize their troops they got some spears Pergamon's got their spears set up here to kind of hold their uh, hold the line and let these archers retreat Carthaginian general falling back I think finally pretty much finally they have taken this area they just had to get through this one unit of mercenary uh, swordsmen and I think that's why Bowie eyes going around this way to seal the deal and then they'll take the gate and then the cav can charge up here but where is that Carthaginian cab? We've yet to see it. Uh, we have yet to see them like in action since we last saw them. The Bowie Eye is sitting in reserve here. And oh, 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 oh. The Carthaginian general is like, no, 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 no. Not on my watch. Nice. I like it. Good move by Carthage. Trying to take out these uh, axe warriors. Bounce is, bounce of power is still pretty much the same, guys. It's pretty crazy. Here comes some Galatian legionaries. They're like, are you sure about that, Carthaginian general? Huh? Are you sure you want to keep fighting? And certainly he does not. And he actually dodges a, m a bunch of arrows there as he falls back with his uh, Libyan infantry. A very good unit. They are falling back. And now they can hurry up and send their unit to get the final flank on these Carthaginians and take control of this gate. Warriors, move out! And Galatia is pushing with some Galatian legionaries against these spears, so they are going to continue to push and try to break through this choke point. Back over this way look who decided to push up a little bit so they were right here they decided to push back up which could give an opportunity to Glacia to hit them on two sides that's what I would do I would send Bo I would send the troops of Bowie I to push up keep these guys occupied and then move like a couple units to go around this way now by doing that you'll be able to hit their flank or They'll see that happening, and then they'll have to fall back, but their backs will turn to the enemy, and they'll take heavy casualties. So, I don't know. I, just, I think that would be a pretty good option, but it seems like the attackers just all want to focus on this one spot right here. And Glacia is going to call it off and cycle in some fresh troops. He's got some spear nobles. A little spear on spear action. Love it. Love it. Alright, so the general is falling back finally. Carthaginian generals, he, he's had enough. He's like, alright, alright, alright. I can't I can't die here. My my troops will lose morale. And here comes the rest of the army. Pouring through the gate that their men just conquered after many lives fought for it. On defense and on attack. We're now less than 20 minutes left in the battle. And it's still hard to determine to determine who's going to win this one. But balance of power is still favoring the defenders. Oh, look what we see. There they are. Hello. The cav is still active. And they are trying to set up an ambush. They are hoping the attackers will sh will quickly shift troops over this way and attack this flank. While they're doing that, the cab will charge in and hit them in the rear. So let's see if that plays out. I don't know if the attackers saw that cab or not. I know we did. 
but maybe the attackers didn't so we'll see how that plays out but for now we're gonna see a, a slow slow grind essentially look at this they're constantly cycling out troops trying to keep them fresh as they uh now take on tribal warriors who are dropping very quickly Nice archer volley there. Going after the skirmishers, sitting in back. Now we got Old Sworn. The Old Sworn of Tylus pushing up. That's a good unit. It's a very good unit. Still nothing going on here. Again, I think Bowiei and and Glacia, they're just gonna hold. I really wish they did do some kind of flanking maneuver. I mean they would kill a lot of troops here. But I guess they feel like, you know, the balance of power is too close. We don't really... We gotta we gotta play everything wise and smart. And there goes the Oath Sworn. And they're cycling in and out of troops. Tribal Warriors falling back as the Oath Sworn charge in. Glacian Nobles Warriors charging in to get a nice charge bonus off and support the infantry. Pergamon still in the thick of this fight. All right, and then here comes another wave of troops. Flashing, look at this fight for this one area, it's crazy. Drissian Kingdom losing their Thracians in there. And pretty soon, I can imagine you're going to see some pikemen. Libyan infantry, they got some archers in reserve. No pikemen from Carthage? Question mark? No African pikemen? Okay. Now we have Cav. Look at this. The Carthaginian Cav have decided to shift over. So they're no longer going to go with that strat. Because maybe they're like, you know what? The attackers aren't even going to go over here. They're not attacking over here. So why would they move all the way over here? So maybe just sitting this cav over, over there is not going to do anything. And that's why they're shifting their cav back over to this flank. And what we might see. Yep. Look at this. Look at this. The march of the mercenary hoplites. They are going to fight. Look at that. That's so cool. Great screenshot. So, yeah, th I think they're going to try to engage them and break through. But the Glacians have a lot of reserve forces here. Look at this. Glacian legionaries, they're going to hold just fine over here. But, maybe... Whoa! Where did these Glacian warriors come from? They must have walked all the way around. Now's a good time to send in that calf. Send this cav in. You could get some good hammer and anvil. Potentially getting behind the infantry who are about to collide here. But no, the cav sits back. They're just looking at this pool of water. It's a very beautiful pool of water. It's nice and clear. Nice and clear. You got some vegetation over here. It looks nice. Mercenary hoplites going in. So they're going to get them stuck in a fight. And then they're going to be able to flank around. Oh, there's... Some of the cab was going to go for it, but Galatio saw it forming. And they formed a nice line. Still, you got to try to do something aggressive with that cab. You just can't sit back. But maybe he's just going to wait for them. Hopefully they forget about the cab. I'm not sure. Oh, look at this. Glacia's moving their general. It's almost like he's using his general for bait. And then the Celtic warriors... Continue to hold against the Spear Nobles. Got Celtic warriors from Bowie Eye who are breaking. 
Yeah, there's gonna be a pile of many dead bodies in this area as this is a crucial position on the battlefield. Bonds of power still even, guys. Again, still think it's slightly in favor of the defenders. And finally, the attackers are sending something over. They're sending something over to keep the defenders honest and to make them spread out their troops. Yeah, we got a huge pileup of cav and infantry. Cav and spears. No way Carthage is going to go for that now. Carthage is just going to sit here and basically defend the rear of the hoplites as they probably are going to lose this battle. They have 12 kills, and then this one over here has 14. So, yeah. I mean, hoplites aren't good at killing things. They're good at holding. Oh, this isn't good. They're starting to wrap around. That's going to cause a lot of hoplites to drop quickly. We'll see how that plays out. I mean, if I was the attack, I would send something. Like, send the general, send the cab, send the spears, and go around and fight. Because now they're sending in swordsmen. Libyan infantry. There's many opportunities from both sides to get some flanking going on. Oh, look at this. The attackers have broken through, and now the defenders are reforming their lines. Oathsworn. A huge line of Oathsworn and tribal warriors. Ready to hold. Oh, and Dylas has even more troops. Thracian. Thracian warriors coming into the mix. A nice solid line of troops. You have, you have the Oath Sworn of the Arverni. So now they're all just pouring in men. Let's see, let's see, let's see. How are the hoplites holding? This one's got 83. This one has 66. And dropping quickly because of this flank right here. That's the worst way, it, that's the best way to lose a hoplite, is have it get flanked. I, I mean, I don't see the, I just don't see the point of the push here with the hoplites. Like, he gained nothing from it. The only thing he did was distract, like, two units of infantry and some archers from the main fight over here. So I think it would have been better off of him just falling back with the hoplites and just hold, just hold here. But maybe they feel like they have enough because we are starting to see more and more troops from the, de the uh, defending side appear. Yeah, I don't know, as more troops appear, I'm like, hmm, maybe the, uh, these pikemen? Yeah, here's the pikemen. Maybe the uh, attackers don't have enough. Ooh, but Tylus is getting beat up here. Their general just died. Tribal warriors are barely hanging on. They're, they're starting to break now. The center has been broken through. They need to shift around some units. They most likely need to get pikemen up there, which they are sending a unit of pikes as we speak. But they need more than that. They need swordsmen in the mix as well. Both pikemen moving up. See, now I bet they're wishing they left these hoplites alive near the town center. Because these guys would have been a huge help right now over on the other side. And guys, I think the attackers, the balance of power is now, it's still extremely even, but it's now ever so slightly in favor of the attackers. Well, let's see if these pikemen can turn it around. These pikes look really cool, too. Pergamon pikemen. And I'm seeing a lot of skirmishing 
ammo coming down. I'm seeing rocks and arrows hitting these guys. And they're already down to 128. They, you know they were saving these archers just for this moment. And I'm not going to call it right here. But this might be the nail in the coffin. Unless they run out of ammo quickly here, which I don't think they are. I think they, I honestly, I don't think these archers have, oh, they, I think they just started firing their arrows. So I think that's the nail in the coffin. The pikemen have no answer to those archers. The defenders don't have enough archers to hold. These archers are out of ammo. And just like that, the pikemen are breaking and they have 32 kills. 32 kills. This other pike unit's doing better with 85 kills, but they're already uh, down to less than 100 uh, now. So, yeah, they're at 99 men. Yeah, they're just going to disengage. Why fight them? Just shoot them, to, shoot them to bits. And there we go. More breaking going on here from Pergamon. Over on this side. Oh my goodness. Carthage decided to charge in with their cabin. It actually caused a huge chain route. Very nice from Carthage keeping this flank alive. After you break these troops though, I would get the, all these men back. Get everyone back. Back to the town center. You, you must. Glacia still putting up a fight here with Gete. Gete also helping as well. more troops pushing up both sides getting to plea the balance of power still dead even and it's seven minutes in the pikes are still alive the pikemen are still alive there's not much infantry here guys oh and look at this the Thracians are pushing the defenders might just hold on here is this a general v general no, no, no. But still, this is an important battle. The Glacians are backing away. Bowie Eye General falling back. Interesting. He might be trying to get them to go into a trap here. Or you can hit them on the flank. Uh, Carthage, what are you doing with your cav? Having the Carthaginian cav over here would be pretty huge. I honestly believe all three of these cav units could, could crush this general... Uh, most of the units here and they can get behind and get after these archers who are probably just opening fire on the pikemen wow, Lots of skirmishing going on here. This is crazy. This is a crazy battle crazy close We have the oath sworn of the Arverni Pushing up against these spears We have Gallic, Gallic Hunters pushing up as well. Coming to reinforce. Bowie Eye trying to fight off these hoplites. We have 165 kills, but their time is limited. They're down to 29 men, and they are surrounded. They're trying to hold, though. And now we have the Adrissian general in an epic cab battle. Some uh, Gete uh, or Gete uh, archers being thrown into the mix. It's really coming down to Pergamon to try to hold this. I'm guessing the archers are dead, or he. He has fallen back. Back over this way, I think Carthage is winning. It looks like Carthage is winning here. The balance of power is shifting more and more in favor of the defenders as the attackers are starting to lose gas. They're starting to lose here. I don't know. They need to pull off some crazy miracle here. Bowie Eye General, I've seen it before. It can certainly happen again. They've got all of their generals still alive, I think. At least Bowie Eye and Galatian general. Um, ooh, wow. The Drissians winning here. Ooh, 
Ooh, I don't know, guys. I think the defense is going to hold. It all, I mean, it, it's so close that it could just come down to a chain route. Whoever can cause the other side to chain route. And that might come down to generals killing another general. And here comes, yep, noble horse, the glacian general. Oh, look at this. He's going for the jugular. He's going for the kill. He's going for these archers. And the Bowie Eye General. Oh my god. Can he pull off the miracle? Look at this. And that's going to cause the Carthaginian General to go into a fight. He has no other choice. And the Bowie Eye General is just charging into the front line to keep the front lines in inspired. To keep fighting. Because they could pull this off. If they can just kill this Carthaginian general. No, he's going to back away. Mercenary uh, infantry, the victorious Carthaginian infantry who are holding the flank are now pushing this other side. So instead, they're going to go after the rear of Pergamon. And this is huge. This is a game-changing move right here by Galicia. And they're going to use Rally. That's a smart move. But now Bowie Eye's doing the same thing through the Stonehenge. They are pushing and trying to get some rear charges. Let's see if they can pull it off again. They got to try to do something. All right, they're backing away. Oh, my God. They're going after archers over here. They might be able to do something crazy. Carthage is kind of doing the same thing though on their side So it's like coming down to a battle of generals. They might want to try to kill this Thracian royal cav unit It's oh my god, it's all coming down to this mosh pit of death Noble horse hammer and anvil Pergamon's general is breaking do they have enough? Oh, this, oh, wow, the general is slowed down. Oh, oh, kill the general. Kill those generals. Bowie eyes going for the general. And the crew, the scorpion crew, holds back the general for a few moments so Bowie eyes general can get in there. Or not. Look at the Bowie eye generals trying to charge right in front of their own general. That's awesome. This is it, guys. Big old mosh pit of victory. Glacius General going through the Stonehenge. Sto Stonehenge trying to get a nice charge off. They do. But is it enough? There's a minute left, and I'm still not sure. I mean, it's looking like the attackers are going to lose this one. But, yeah, that's that's probably how it's going to end. What a, what a good fight, though. I was hoping... The flanking charge with Glacia and Arverni or Bowie Eye. I was hoping that would change something. That maybe they would get a chain route, but it just wasn't enough. Even Pergamon backed away their general so he wouldn't die or break. And that's it, guys. That's going to be a defensive victory. But what a battle. Extremely, extremely close. And it's a tough this is a tough settlement to attack I usually always when I see this map the defenders win because of how the town center is set up two choke points and look at the bodies just littered littered all over the battlefield oh a nasty bloody battle it was great 4v4 a great fight in many different places and just a good battle overall so defenders win uh, so GG to everyone here this was a great fight. Good kills on both sides. See, who got the most kills? Two, five? Oh, two, Dan, Carthage. 2,700 kills. A lot with the Cav. 421. So that Cav really did pay off, huh? Maybe not right at the beginning, but it did pay off later on. And that's always a smart thing. You know, if you get expensive Cav, don't just suicide them out. Try to do something. Be patient and wait for a better opportunity. And they definitely got their money's worth. The other one getting 163. So, yeah, that's going to wrap it up here, guys, for this battle. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Again, Joe Ellington, thank you so much. Check out their channels. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. It was a lot of fun to do Rome 2 again. 
Uh, just a reminder, if you haven't subscribed, if you could, I think like 50% of my viewers aren't subscribed. So we're on that road to 1 million. But thank you guys so much, and I'll see you next time on the battlefield.